Good evening, everyone! <laughs> this is week number five, February 1st through February the 7th. Now, last week was a very fun week. Had three games, had the Celebrity Game on Friday, we had the Rise of Tiamat game on Saturday afternoon, and Princes of Apocalypse was on Sunday. Full slate of games uh, again this week. Well, do you, well yeah, I'll talk about the schedule in a little bit, but uh, first, going to go ahead and talk about the grab bag. So the grab bag, uh, there's pretty interesting things on here that, well, one anyways pertaining to. But the first uh, question is uh, Richard Suppley, and he's asking a question about Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. And he states that he's new to D&D and using uh, these awesome videos to learn the game. So thank you very much, first of all, Richard, for the kind words. I totally appreciate it. And he asks, how does the enlarge ability work with a barbarian's rage? I doubt I can cast enlarge while raging, but could I enlarge first, then rage and stay enlarge? Google hasn't been helping me find the answer. Can you help me with the answer, David? And you know what, Richard? I can help you with that. So yeah, I mean, in, in the, the new Sword Coast Adventurer's Guide, you can play a Duogar. And one of the magical abilities that they get at level 3 is you can cast Enlarge on yourself. It works like the third level spell, and it takes an action. So on your turn, you get an action, a standard, well, standard action, a bonus action, and your movement. So if you use Enlarge to, you know, if you use that Enlarge, that's your standard action. If you want to rage, that takes a bonus action. So technically, you can do both in one round, but I don't really recommend that because you need to read about raging for the barbarian. There are some certain mechanics that you need to satisfy to be able to s continually rage. So, especially at the lower levels. So, I would probably enlarge one round and then the next round I would start raging and get your attack. And then the higher level you get, you'll get, you know, extra attack as well. So, to answer your question, yes, if you're playing a Duogar Barbarian, you can enrage and you can enlarge at the same time. So the enlarge will give you, what, an extra 1d4 damage, I think that's what it does. Pretty nice. It doubles your size from a medium to a large creature. Pretty cool. Really intimidating. So that'd be some pretty fun roleplay, too. So I hope that answers your question, Richard, and uh, thanks for the kind words. Next is uh, from a... YouTube viewer named Afotacon, and Afotacon is ref asking about a rule in Savage Worlds, and I really like Savage Worlds, and I'm hoping that we can pick the Zombie Apocalypse game back up before the end of the year. I'm really hoping so. And Afotacon asks, and this is about the initiative system, because the initiative system doesn't use dice. It uses a deck of cards to do initiative every round. Really awesome system. So if you've never read about Savage Worlds, it's a really uh, generic universal uh, rule set, and you can use it for any genre, for fantasy, for zombie apocalypse, for sci-fi, for uh, superheroes, for World War II, for Civil War. There are literally settings for every anything that you can think of for Savage Worlds. It is out there. So he asks about the initiative system. Afotacon asks, when you say a joker can interrupt another player, do you mean that they're taking their turn before that player? And does anything or uh, anything else mean that they can just interrupt in the middle of that player's turn? That's basically what the question asks, is asked from Afotacon. And yeah, it is. Uh, that's pretty much on... Page, I think it's page 72 of the, the hardback core rule book. It does state, and I'll read this word for word for you. It says, uh, when a player draws a joker, his character can go whenever he wants in the round. Whenever he or, sh he or she wants to go. And that even means interrupting another character's action if he or she wants. So yes. That means that if you're just fixing to do your attack roll, old Johnny come lately says, Oh, hey, I got the Joker card here. I want to use my Joker card. Well, that means that he can interrupt you. And then it kind of messes with the chi of the game a little bit and interrupts you when you're on a move and on a roll. And But yeah, 
person with the Joker card, they can interrupt whenever they want. And it also gives them a plus two uh, bonus to all rolls and plus two to all damage, I think, too. So there you go. I hope that answers your question, uh, Aphoticon. Now, the last thing that I want to talk to uh, all of you about the, the grab bag is something that I usually don't do. And uh, it's pretty much calling someone out. And I, I don't like to do this, so I'm not going to name drop. I'm not going to do anything like that. But if you post something on the comments, and believe me, guys, I read every single comment. I just, over the last four days, five days, I've just literally answered 400 plus comments. And answering those 400 comments probably turned into another hundred or 150 responses to the responses. So guys, if you're going to do a comment, use proper pronunciation. Use, don't, I mean, this is ridiculous. Look at this, guys. I'm not going to name drop, but this is pertaining to one of my games from about a year and a half ago. Uh, well, I'd probably say about a year ago. This is a zombie apocalypse game. And the person in question here is, uh, has commented before, and, and it's usually always some stupid bullshit that's, uh, you know, so nitpicky. And to, you know, and you guys are going to get a free rant out of this, too. And I know you guys never get rants on my weekly video, but I'm going to give you one this week, because sometimes it just gets fucking ridiculous. As you guys have been in the channel for a long time, I love to do modules. Well, I don't follow the modules word for word verbatim. It's not the end-all, be-all, guys. If, if I change an encounter, if I change a creature, if I don't do something in the book, I've read the book, trust me, I've probably read this stuff more than you guys. This is all I do. So believe me, I know the content. I like to change things up because I hate it when people fall around. Oh, he's going to do this and he's going to do that. Blah, 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 blah. So anyways, if you're going to leave a comment, at least, per, you know, at least capitalize your fucking eyes and don't have one goddamn five or four sentence run-on sentence that has absolutely no bearing. You're not even spelling shit right. So this cat says, I'm pretty sure Cletus didn't get infected and I kind of thought you were mean to pick on him without looking back at the video. I hope he didn't turn into a zombie in the video and that's why, letter Y, he's not there cuz, if so, you got his character almost killed like Vera. Anyway, there should have been a fucking period at the end of this, pal. Anyway, I love this video. Well, I could really fucking tell. And I hope you will look back, without a K, you spelled that fucking wrong, at your videos for an easy RPing in the future. What the hell are you talking about, dude? Seriously. Now, first off, I don't make the player's decisions. So if Cletus wants to suck the infection or bile out of a, a wound on someone, he's going to have a chance of becoming infected himself. So it's not my fault. I didn't say, I didn't hold a e gun up to him and say, Cletus or Pathfinder, you're going to suck the infection because this is going to make for good YouTube videos. I don't do that. And Vera, I didn't kill Vera. She didn't, I didn't, you got his character. Well, first off, Vera is a she. So if you don't know that Vera is a she, she is spelled S-H-E, not H-I-S. All right, so she killed herself, basically. I didn't kill Vera. She put herself in that situation. She killed herself. She offed herself. So, you know, get your shit straight before you leave a comment. And please, for the love of all that's sacred, you got about a half a dozen eyes that aren't capitalized. You have no commas. You're, you're spelling everything wrong. So if you want to, if you want some constructive feedback from me, show me the common decency and use your brain up here. It's in here. Spell the shit right and use proper pronunciation. All right. And and hopefully, here's some free advice for you, man. 
I hope you don't do this on a job application or any kind of anything for the professional world because if you do you're really fucked man and don't ever put this kind of shit on a resume because I would just laugh at you and not hire you so anyways that's your free rant that's the first rant that I've ever done <laughs> on a this week video and I, you know I don't like to do it I'm not going to name drop this cat but hey if you want some constructive feedback from me and if you want to hear a logical response common courtesy spell you know just type the shit out right so anyways that's the grab bag for this week guys <laughs> unbelievable all right so what's going to be going on this week Lots of stuff. First off, if you haven't noticed, all of the videos from last week are up. The Celebrity Game is on dndcast.com. It's not on my YouTube channel. I have no clue why I can't put it on there. Uh, it's up to them. Uh, it, it doesn't. But anyways, you can view on dndcast.com if you want to see the Celebrity Game. Now, we may be going to two times a month on the celebrity game so I'm not too sure yet we're kind of throwing some dates around with one another and once I find out you guys will be the first one to know believe me you'll be the first one to know alright so next I want to talk about the Saturday and Sunday games they were also uploaded on YouTube they're all ready to go in nice 30 minute increments and if you haven't, seriously, if you haven't got caught up on the Rise of Tiamat and Princes of, po of Apocalypse, seriously, guys, you need to really watch those videos. They're really good, and I'm, I'm really not joking around. They're really good. I mean, the games are good. So next, let's talk about the Roll20 interview. And uh, about two weeks ago, two, three weeks ago, I started talking about this uh, in a previous weekly video. And Nolan had sent me uh, an email, and he's doing his rounds for the year, and he asked if, uh, if I would have some time for him. And I, and, and I most certainly will always have time for Roll20. I love Roll20, guys. I have always loved Roll20. I love what they do, and I just, I really love what they just did with it, with the 5 ESRD. I mean, it's, it's beautiful. So Nolan's going to be coming on February 8th. And uh, he's going to come on at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. Uh, Pacific. And we're going to talk about, you know, the past of Roll20, where Roll20 is currently at, and where Roll20 is going in the future. I've got a lot of questions for, for Nolan. If you guys have questions for Nolan, leave them down in the comment section down below, guys. That's why it's there. I look at them. It may take a day, two days, three days for me to reply, but I always reply. I always do. I just did probably 500 comments the last four or five days. I'm commented out today. All right, so that's the Roll20 interview. Now, next is last week I talked to you guys about a T-shirt drive. I did one back in, I believe it was uh, September of last year. And uh, a lot of people have asked, they've seen us playing with our uh, tabletop shirts on, and they are always asking on YouTube and in the Twitch chat, how do I get a roll? How do I get a, a, a you know a shirt with table topping on it? Well, it's going to be easy. I'm going to start a drive here within the next week, and uh, the shirts are hopefully going to be about twenty to twenty-two dollars. I'm hoping to keep it in that range. Now, on the website tomorrow at some point, there will be a straw poll, and the straw poll will ask you what type of design do you want. Are you going to want the traditional type of look, which is the the old look? That well, and I don't mean old look. It's just the first logo that I use, and it's uh, the shirts are really nice. There's going to be about eight different colors, anything from green to blue to to gray to black, and it's going to have the tabletop logo logo on the front, right about the chest, the breast area. And you're going to have a Twitch logo. Now, it has to have the Twitch logo because it's through the, the Twitch partnership program with Teespring. So that's going to have to be that way. So that's what the, the traditional t-shirt is going to look like. Now, you can also get that on a hoodie. And the hoodie is about $40. And this is what the hoodie looks like. Now, for the hoodies, you can get a 
pullover hoodie or you'll be able to get a zip up hoodie and I believe that there's going to be multiple colors for the hoodies also now here's the new logo do you want the you know, do you want this this run of table topping t-shirts to have this logo unfortunately this logo has more than 10 colors so I can't impose this logo on the shirt because there's just too many colors so what I'll probably do is probably take some of the colors out but still the logo and the integrity of the logo will still be the same so you're gonna have a choice of the old logo the well the first generation logo or the second generation logo so that's gonna be tweeted out it's gonna be on Facebook it's gonna be on my twitch channel it's gonna be front page on my website and that's gonna run for two weeks and uh, probably around the 14th or 15th is when I will make the final decision on which logo that we're gonna run and it's gonna be up to you guys and that's that's just what it's gonna be so I'm hoping to keep the cost around twenty two dollars twenty three dollars for the shirts and the the hoodies I think are gonna be about forty I have no really have no control so the more colors I believe the more it's gonna be so you also need to take that into consideration for whenever you vote and I want everybody to vote I don't want 50 votes on this I mean I will I expect to see hundreds of votes on this guys I mean you guys ask for this stuff all the time and I usually don't do this kind of stuff but I'm gonna do it again for you guys so I, I want to see what you guys say alright so that's uh, that's pretty much it and if you have any other other comments about the t-shirts the t-shirt drive leave a comment down below alright so next we're gonna talk about what's going on this week first off I've done some fantasy grounds tutorials today they'll be edited and up tomorrow I think I have four or five going up tomorrow all right second of all uh, the virtual reality game is probably not going to happen for uh, again it, it it's really hard to find virtual reality players that need to have an oculus rift at six hundred at seven hundred dollars and every time that I've tried to throw this game excluding the first time because those were alt space employees I just can't find people to play VR so that game is probably gonna go away alright I'm gonna be uh, probably doing something on a Friday maybe once a month with my own content because the whole reason for this is because I want to show the world my world I want to show everybody in the channel and around the world what I have done with a with a fantasy world that I've created. I mean, it's a it's a it's a dark place. I mean, it's not your your bubbly mini golf forgotten realms type of environment. This place is with few a few bright spots. It's actually a, a really bad place. Magic doesn't work in a lot of areas. So there's a lot of places magic doesn't even work. So and then there's places in the world where magic is amplified. You just have to find those areas. So I want this to be, I'm just not doing this to do us. You know, if I have players for this, I want them to be the same players. I want them to be dedicated. And I can't just throw people in with a one shot with this virtual reality stuff and get satisfaction from it. Because they're going to go off right off into the sunset and they don't give a shit about the story. I want players that want to know the story, want to know about my world, that want to invest a day a month into playing this game. So uh, I've got plenty of players already, and I have plenty of players that want to play. Guys, I, I get emails every day, comments every day on, hey, I want to play in a game, can you get me into a game? Well, all my games are full, unfortunately. But I have a list of people that want to continue to play. So I'm going to put together a list of, I'm going to put together a group of people and I'm going to take them through my content. What rule set I'm going to use, that's still up in the air. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to use 5e OGL. I don't know if I'm going to use Monty Cook's uh, Numenera Cipher system. I don't know if I'm going to use Chris Premis's Fantasy Age. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. I have no clue. But uh, there's a lot of great systems out there, a lot of great mechanic systems. 
and I just don't know what I'm going to use it. That's like the biggest thing. That's the biggest hurdle that I'm trying to jump over right now. I mean, it it really is. So once I have more information for you on that, hopefully within the next month or so, uh, I'll be able to give you something more definitive with some definitive times and, and stuff like that. Now, also that stuff is going to be affected on my Patreon. And you'll be able to get all of that content if you're a Patreon uh, subscriber or P Patreon donator when I switch everything over and it hasn't changed over yet uh, all of that content that I create is going to be part of Patreon so and it'll it'll be you know in correspondence with a license or OGL or whatever so there's going to be no copyright issues or, or nothing like that so uh, but it'll all conform with uh, licensing alright so that's the VR game it's probably not going to happen anymore now also you know here's another thing uh, what I'm working on this week is I've got a massive issue with storage and uh, videos I've been doing this for two and a half years guys I have literally have almost four terabytes of videos and I've been buying uh, a bunch of these uh, external drives and I'm trying to find my external USB drive, but uh, oh, here it is over here. Well, anyways, I've I've bought almost a dozen of these things, and because I I back them up also twice, so for every terabyte I have two of these, and I can't do that anymore because these things are about fifty bucks a pop. So it costs me a hundred bucks to store, uh, basically a terabyte worth of data. So I, I've uh, gone to Amazon and gotten a, a year subscription for unlimited storage, and uh, it's only $60 a year. So I'm in the process of uploading four terabytes of videos. I mean, it is just crazy, the amount of videos. I have thousands of videos that I'm uploading. It's crazy. I didn't know how much I had until I looked in my drawer and saw all of these you know these little portable uh, external drives and I'm like man I've got to do something about that so I'm gonna just get rid of them I don't need them so I've got a bunch of I don't know maybe I'll do giveaways and give them away I don't know but anyways that's like my big project now uploading all of that stuff onto the the Amazon cloud and I'm still in the process of uploading data into my 13th age rule set because we will be playing 13th age this year we will alright so Schedule for this week, Monday through Thursday, a little bit of Diablo 3, probably a little bit tonight. It's a, Even though it's a, a little bit after 11 p.m. right now as I'm making this video, uh, I will be playing a little bit of Diablo tonight. And uh, But for the majority of the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, I will be doing more uh, Fantasy Ground stuff. I even mentioned that in the channel. So... All right, next Friday, I'm going to break out the old DM workshop, the old fireside chat. So this Friday, we are going to do a fireside chat, and we're going to be talking about the new D&D 5e OGL, what it means to D&D, what it means to the longevity of it, and what it means for you if you're a possible creator and if you want to create content for it. So we'll be talking about that. And also, there is a new Unearthed Arcana, that has some archetypes for the fighter, for the ranger, and we're going to go over those as well. So, that's what we're going to be doing on Friday. Fireside chat. We're going old school. I'm going to have the back. I'm going to have the fire place in the background it's winter it's freezing here in florida it's like probably 75 degrees right now i even have to keep my head warm because it's so cold i mean it's literally armageddon here in florida right now guys it's it's cold <laughs> all right that's going to be friday 8 p.m eastern saturday and sunday 4 p.m you guys know rise of tmats on saturday sunday princes of apocalypse that's it for me we're done up above, guys, see those right there? Those are the first generation logos. If you want a first generation logo on a shirt, vote for it. It will be up on the website. It'll be tweeted and Facebooked everywhere tomorrow. All right? Vote. Don't not vote. I don't want you not to vote. I want you to vote. Or if you want the new logo, which is second generation logo, it was made by Zovia, aka Vey. 
right up above. Choose one or the other, first generation or second generation. Leave a comment down below, guys. And once again, guys, sorry about that rant earlier. But seriously, if you're going to leave a damn comment on my YouTube channel or something, at least use proper spelling. And at least don't, don't blame me for something that a player does. I mean, that's about, you know, it's dumb. It's, it's about as intelligent as a bag of hammers, all right? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Anyways, you guys, you guys got a free rant. You guys always ask for the rants. You guys got one this week. So anyways, it's been 26 minutes. I'll see you guys next Monday. Ciao.